So, last class we have discussed the problem formulation of quadratic optimization problem using the simplex method. If you recall, we have the, this is the quadratic function, our problem is to minimize f of x, which is in quadratic form. And we have a inequality constraint and equality constraints, <coughs> but this inequality constraint and inequality constraint, they are affine functions, linear functions. So, we have formulated this thing into standard, standard Lagrangian function. Inequality constraint, we have converted into a equality constraint, then it is uh, what is called Lagrangian function is formed. Then mu lambda is a your um, Lagrange multiplier, which is associated with the equality constraint and that equality constraints, um, equality constraint that lambda associated with the equality constraint and the lambda value is not restricted that its value can be positive and negative and 0. Whereas, this factor is associated with the inequality constraints and this Lagrangian multiplier corresponding to inequality constraint we consider as a mu that is greater than equal to 0 when this this type of inequality constraint we have. That, that is we have discussed earlier in details that why the mu value should be greater than equal to 0. So, if you now write the what is called KKT necessary condition, we have shown that these are the equation we will get it equation number 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, this equation we can write into matrix and vector form which will be equal to into this form that first is x variable then we have considered mu Lagrangian multiplier associated with the inequality constant, then Lagrangian multiplier equal to what is called that uh, next is variable we have considered the s associated with the that is your <coughs> select variables, then we have considered lambda, these two are lambda, lambda is since unsigned we have split up into a two positive quantities. So, uh, this equation, equation number 2, 3, 4 and 5, if you write in matrix form equation number 2, 3, 4, if you write in equation number matrix and vector form, it will come into this structure B, this whole matrix I am writing B into x, x is the all variables Lagrangian multipliers and the your decision variables and right hand side is the D, we have defined is D. So, we have to solve this one. Now, this problem is simply a what is called algebraic equation B x is equal to D. So, this problem we are we cannot solve directly what we consider introduce we introduce what is called a artificial variable along with this one B x is equal to D we have considered artificial variable B P and P how many vector this is a vector of dimension n cross m plus p into 1. So, there are m plus n plus m plus p variables are there. So, this artificial variable all elements all elements of each artificial variables which is a p is a vector we add together and that w is called artificial cost function. So, look at this expression. So, our problem is minimize this artificial objective function subject to the constraints. What is the constraints we have? We have constraints <coughs> these equations which is converted into a standard LP problem is a standard LP problem. Our problem is minimize this artificial objective function subject to this objective function. Now, we, we know this B matrix. If you now con I write in tabular form to solve in the simplex, simplex method, you can see carefully that how I am formed this matrices. So, the equation number 2, the equation number 2, we have taken a simple example, we have seen where H, N, C, A, B, E and all these things are C, all these things are described in the examples. So, I am just writing the equation number 2, this equation number 2, this one which in turn it will come this and this equation. So, now this is our <coughs> one equation number 2, this is we got from equation number 3 
and this is we got from equation number 4. With each equation there is an artificial variable p, with, with this equation p 1 is there, with this equation p 2 is there, with this equation p 3 is there, with this equation p 4 is there. If you write in tabular form now, it will be like this say x 1, x 2 our the two original decision variable, then x 3 is corresponding to our mu, then x 4 is corresponding to our artificial variables. <coughs> okay. Then x 5 is corresponding to x 5 is corresponding to y and x 6 corresponding to z and y and z commonly they form is a Lagrange multiplier associated with the equality constraints. So, remaining x 7, x 8, x 9, x 10 are the what is called artificial variable introduced in the system equation that is b x plus p this one. So, this s is a our slack variables agree? I mentioned earlier artificial is a slack variables x 4. So, now how you form this table you see 2 x 1 coefficient of x 1 is 2 I have written 2. Then you see there is no coefficient of x 2 that x 2 is 0. Then there is a this is we have denoted is x 7 uh, what is called that y is we have denoted in x 5. So, x 5 coefficient is 1. So, x 5 coefficient is 1. Then z is x 6 we have defined x 6 that coefficient is minus 1 I have written minus 1. Then mu mu is the mu that variable is defined at x 3 that coefficient is 1 say x 3 is 1 and remaining coefficient is 0 except the what is called artificial but there is a artificial variable p 1 you can see from this expression that p 1. So, we have written this attribute x 7 is 1 and is equal to 6 that is the first equation you have written and similarly second equation you can write it which you will get it this equation and their artificial variable is x 8 coefficient is x 8 is 1 and from equation 3 you see x 1 x 1 plus x 2 plus x s s is defined by a variable x 4. So, it will be x 1 coefficient 1 x 2 coefficient 1, x 4 coefficient 1, see x 1 coefficient 1, x 2 coefficient 1, x 4 coefficient 1 and this is is a third equation then p 3 will come and p 3 coefficient is p 3 corresponding to x 9 is 1 and this equal to 4 that 4. Similarly, last equation one can write it is nothing but x 1 minus 3 x 2 plus a artificial variable that will p 4 which is we define a new variable x 10. So, it will be you see this 1 then minus 3 and then 10th position is equal to 1. So, this now how you get is that <coughs> artificial variables that is the artificial variable. Now, what is the artificial cost function that is we have determined sum of p 1 p 2 up to p n in our case up to p 4. So, if you just p 1, p 2, p 3, p 4 and what is p 1? p 1 from this equation p 1 is nothing but a 6 minus if you take that side right hand side 2 x 1 minus x 3 minus x 5 plus x 6 agree is equal to x 7 and x 7 is nothing but a p 1. Similarly, p 2 is equal to x 8 is equal to p 2 I can write a 6 minus 2 x 2 minus x 3 plus 3 x 5 minus 3 x 6 if you take that side is equal to p 2. So, if you similarly I can write p 3 and p 4 if you add all these things I will get this one. So, the artificial objective function I can write it now 4 x 1 minus 4 then 0 there is no x 2 x 3 minus 2 x 4 coefficient minus 1 x 5 coefficient 2, x 6 coefficient minus 2 is equal to that is we have denoted w. So, w we have written. So, now we have to follow our standard simplex technique to minimize this objective artificial objective function w 
equal to 0 that is how they are. So, next step is what you find out the pivot column this you from the you just look the what is the <coughs> maximum negative coefficient associated in the artificial objective function here. So, this column is the pivot column and what is the pivot row you divide this coefficient along this column the 2 divided by 6 divided by 2 is this is 3 you can write it this is 3 then this is 0 ignore this is 4 4 divided by 1 that 1 divided by 1 this is 1. So, this is the minimum ratio you got it. So, this is our pivot element and this is our pivot row. So, this way we have identified pivot row then after that you know that x 1 will be entering as a basic variable and x 10 will live as a non basic variables and then procedure whatever we have discussed earlier repeat for few iterations then you will get the final solution of this problem. That means, the initially problem is given if you see the initially problem is given a quadratic optimization problems to solve that by using what is called simplex method that is this quadratic objective function is quadratic and what is our that uh, our um, inequality constraint and equality constraint and affine functions this. So, this is called quadratic optimization problem that can be solved by using what is called simplex method. Before that you have to convert what is called KKT necessary condition by converting into Lagrangian functions. So, this is we have discussed last class up to this. So, please solve this problem complete this problem you will see after few iteration the solution is given x after 4 iteration see what is the value of x 1 is coming this is 13 by 4 x 2 is coming 3 by 4 then x 3 is coming 3 by 4 that way. So, our basic importance variables are x 1 and x 2. So, this solution of you will get optimum value of the function at x 1 when it is 13 by 4 and x 2 3 by 4. So, today we will start that is the solution of what is called optimization problem using interior point method. So, our next topics is interior point method. <coughs> interior point method for solving optimization problems. So, interior point method can be used for solving the linear programming problem. First, it can be interior point method can be used for linear standard linear programming problem linear standard programming problems and also we can solve the convex optimization problems, convex optimization problems that includes that includes inequality and equality constant that includes equality and inequality constant. So, you through interior point method we can solve two class of problems one is linear problems linear standard LP problem, another is convert to optimization problems along with the inequality and equality constant. Standard LP problem may be equality and inequality constants also there in relation to this. So, let us see that what is our standard LP problem, standard LP problem. 
recall our standard LP problem is minimization f of x whose dimension n decision variable is we written C transpose of x n subject to the standard LP problem I am writing. If you can if you can recollect this thing that what we have discussed earlier A x is equal to B B dimension is n m cross n this agree and b is greater than equal to 0 and x is greater than equal to 0. And <coughs> we define now feasible zero. we have to find out the solution of the solution of this problem such that the function below is minimum not only minimum is must satisfy this equation that means that point at which the function below will be minimum that point must be inside the feasible region. Then what is feasible region? The feasible region as we define like this way define the feasible region f f is the feasible region. let us call this is the feasible region that f we had denoted this is the feasible region feasible region f is denoted by x any point in this feasible x it must satisfy all equality condition of standard LP problem that is generally a x is equal to b it must satisfy for x greater than equal to 0. So, this if for any value of x in this region, if it is satisfied this one, then f is called that feasible region of the corresponding problem. So, simply definition is like this way, x whose dimension in n cross n is called an interior point. of f, f is what feasible region, x is called interior point of f. This means, if any point in the feasible any point inside the feasible region is there, if consider that point is the interior point of f, f if x superscript this belongs to f. And not only this, every component of x must be greater than equal to 0 and also x j superscript 0 means any point in the initial point is must be greater than equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to dot dot n. So, this is the definition of interior point. So, if you have a feasible region, if the point is belongs to this in the feasible region and it satisfied that the all values of x is greater than or equal to 0, then this point is called interior point interior point of the feasible region. Agree? So, let us see that how one can solve the this type of problems whether it is a linear programming problem or it is a convex optimization problem what is the basic steps are there to solve this problem. So, our algorithmic steps algorithmic steps are like this way. So, what is the algorithmic steps? First you find out the interior point agree, of the feasible region of the problem, then you move from this point in a such a direction. So, that the function below the objective function below decreases agree? that objective function below is decreases that means, we are in the interior point from there we move in such a direction. So, that function below is decreases and then test it whether it this point has reached to the optimal value of the function or not. If it is if it does not uh, reach to the optimum value of the function then move to another point. Okay. So, that 
the function value is decreases from the previous value of the function. And in this way, we can reach to the optimum value of the function starting from the initial starting point should be inside the what is called interior point. So, our algorithm steps first, first step is find an initial find an initial feasible point solution okay. to begin the iteration process. This is first step and next step, step 2 generate a new point next is generate a <coughs> a new feasible interior point that will give lower objective function value that means from the initial point you move in such a direction so that function value is decreased step 3 test it for optimality test the new point for optimality if it is not optimal if it is not optimal if it is not optimal move to the if it is not optimal repeat step 2 until optimality is reached, mality is reached. So, this is the three basic steps where we will adopt for interior point methods. So, let us see that how to find out the what is called the feasible direction. So, next is definition a direction d whose dimension is same as the feasible uh, decision variables a direction d whose dimension n cross n is a descent direction descent direction If, if moving if moving along the direction if moving along the direction decreases the function values the function values function value of the objective function that we have discussed in details when you have discussed the how to find out the optimum value of the function by using steepest descent method if you recollect our earlier discussion. So, let us see this one suppose we are in the feasible region interior point of the feasible region and we are here let us call first that is x superscript 0 we are here and we move in such a direction. So, that the function value objective function value is decreases from the previous value of the function. So, let us call this is our direction 
that if you move in this direction, then this function value will decrease. So, parallel to this one, we are here now, parallel to this one, so this is this is this one parallel to this, this, this one, I moved in this way from initial from this state, I moved like this way. So, this is our we can say it is a lambda into d, where lambda is greater than equal to 0, greater than equal to 0. If it is 0, then this is this point. So, now what is, where is our new vector of x? This is our new vector and that is our x. So, we, we moved from initial vector, which is in the feasible region in such a direction, so that the new vector, new decision variable with the help of new decision variable, the function value should decrease. Okay? That is our basic. So, this is our x 1, let us call for two dimensional case, two decision variable case that can be extended for n dimensional decision variable. Okay? Note, <coughs> now see this one, our objective function value is what? Objective function value, objective function f x is equal to c transpose of x and let d is the our descent direction that d is the descent direction. And in this direction if you move from this initial position if you move in this direction agree and we are if we are here then our vector is x is here. So, our we can write it c transpose x must be equal to c transpose of our initial vector initial decision values of this vector x this must be the then we are moving in the right direction to minimize the functions. So, that is the direction uh, you know, what is called descent direction and from this one we parallel to this one we drawn this this one. Now, we can write it c transpose x is what this vector plus this vector. So, x of superscript x of 0 plus lambda into d and d is a vector of dimension n cross 1 is equal to less than c transpose x of 0 and then c transpose x of 0 plus lambda is a scalar quantity, we can take it out and we can write c d is equal to c transpose x 0. So, this this cancel. Since lambda is since lambda is greater than 0 greater than equal to 0. So, we can write that c transpose d is equal to 0. That also we have discussed in earlier in descent, steepest descent method. Now, what is your conclusion? Which direction will move? If you can move in this direction and this direction, how will you decide? If you decide d is equal to minus c, then from equation 1, that means this condition indicates, this condition indicates that our function value will decrease if we move from x to x 0 to in this direction okay? and this will be function value will decrease and this condition must satisfied. And when this condition must satisfy the, the, this one sorry this is greater than equal to less than equal to. When this condition will be satisfied if you one of the choice of d is if you consider d is equal to minus c then from equation 1 we can write it from 1 we can write is c transpose into d is minus c is equal to let us see what that is minus c transpose c. This is nothing but a Euclidean norm of that c vector and square and this quantity if you see this quantity always greater than 0 greater than equal to 0. Okay? So, this indicates this quantity since it is minus sign is there preceded with minus sign, this is preceded with minus sign that whole quantity is less than 0, this quantity. 
So, this you can write mean like it less than equal to 0. <coughs> so, this is the condition that one of the choice of descent direction is will be with minus sign of the cost function coefficients. So, <coughs> now we have and if this is the direction and this x is belongs to this feasible region, if you move in this direction and that final vector is x, if it is belongs to what is the feasible region, this new point, this is the new point, it must satisfy our equality constraint. If you see this must satisfy our equality constraint, agree is equal to b. Let us see what is this one, x is what? x 0 plus lambda d is equal to b and this x 0 plus lambda into a d is equal to b and this quantity since x 0 is belongs to the feasible region means interior point of the feasible region this quantity is b. So, therefore, this condition is a into d is equal to 0 since lambda is greater than equal to 0. Lambda since we, when we are moving from this point to some point then lambda quantity is positive you can omit 0 also if you like. So, this so this is the condition. So, <coughs> so a and d must be 0 this is the conditions we got it. So, remarks what is the remarks we can write it for this one if f if d d is the descent direction okay, is a feasible is a feasible direction it must satisfy it must satisfy a d is equal to 0. If d is a feasible direction that it must satisfy feasible direction means what feasible descent direction you can write it feasible descent direction means that the function value will decrease if you move in these directions and it must satisfy the our equality constraints also. Okay. So, satisfy this one and not only this the x which is equal to x 0 plus lambda d must be greater than 0 to satisfy the non negativity of the decision variables. This is a non negativity non negativity restrictions on the decision variables. So, in short if d is the descent direction then it must satisfy a into d is equal to 0. This is the <coughs> what is called equality constraint must satisfy. Let us take one simple point and see the effect of interior point then how to choose the interior point of this one example. This is we have given till now some basic definition of this one. Let us call minimize f of x is equal to minus x 1 plus x 2 agree which you can write c transpose minus 1 1 x 1 x 2 which is nothing but a c transpose x x dimension 2 cross 1 subject to x 1 plus x 2 is greater than less than equal to 5 then x 2 is less than equal to 4 and x 1 and x 2 is greater than equal to 0. This is our problems of this one. Now, let us see if we represent this one in graphically what it looks like. 
this is easy to represent. First, we have a coordinate axis x 1 and this is x 2 and this since x 1 is greater than equal to 0, then this indicates the upper half of this from this line. Since x 2 x 1 is greater than equal to 0, this means this part of this one will be our feasible region. Okay? And another constant is that x 2 is less than 4, that x 2 suppose this is 4, this is 2, 2, 4. So, that should be less than equal to this. So, this. Now, we have a x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 5. So, when x 1 is 0, x 2 is equal to 5. Let us call this is the 5, some 5.5. And similarly, when x 2 is 0, x 1 is 5. So, let us call this is 2, 4, 2, 4, this is 5. So, you draw this, sorry, you draw this line, okay. And this region, below this region is the feasible region. So, our effective feasible region is this portion. This from here, this is the feasible region. Let us take, we take there are two points are there inside the feasible region. May interior point, we take two points. Let us call one is, <coughs> let us call we take the 1.5 and 1.5. This coordinate is, let us call 1.5 and 1.5. Sorry, it is here somewhere, not here. This point, this point. This is this is one one point five. Let us call this coordinate is one point five, and this coordinate is one point five here. Then another coordinate you consider that three one. Let us call this is a two. This is a three, and one. This is two. Our case the one will be somewhere here. So this coordinate is three one. So, this point we will call the point B and this point we will call the point A, this point. Okay? So, there are two points are there we have considered inside the interior region, the interior point. Now, we can say that point A is more centered, point A is more centered than the point B we can say point A is more centered than the point B and point B coordinates are 3 1 and point A coordinates are 1.5 and 1.5. More centered in the means this point A point is equidistant from the coordinate axis. This is one is 1.5 from here also 1.5 equidistance and this here off centered. You can say this point B is more off centered compared to A. So, <coughs> now clearly if you see our objective function is what? If you see the our objective function is this one, this function we have to minimize. Agree? When f x this is equal to 0, when object function value is 0, we can write x 1 is x 2 is equal to x 1. That means, our objective function expression is that one with a 45, slope is 45 and this is the our objective function value f x, which is given minus x 1 plus x 2 is equal to 0 this one and it is passing through the origin. Now, you see this objective function line, if you move in this side, 
the function below is decreasing, 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 decreasing and may at, at most you can go at this point when it is crossing this one, at this one it is a function below is minimum. Okay. This is graphically one can see that one. So, if you move in this direction the function value is increasing and from this one if function value is decreasing. Now, if, if this point A is the our you can say starting point of our iteration of interior point, point this then which direction is we have to move it? Just now we have proved it the choice of D must be equal to choice of D what is called direction vector will be minus C and what is C? You just say C is our case is minus 1 and 1 is C. So, with minus sign I have keeping with multiplied by with minus sign 1 whatever the vector you will get in that direction you move it. Let us call C is what? That C the what is called our objective function. This is the C transpose is minus 1 plus 1. So, take that C, C is minus 1 plus 1 this agree. So, our C is minus 1 in these directions and plus 1 it is a 2 plus 1 somewhere here. So, this so, this is the our C vector. Okay. So, our D vector will be which one? If you see our D vector, our D vector is opposite to this one. So, this is our D. Okay. So, which direction from this point, which direction parallel to this direction you have to move it. Parallel to this direction from this point A, I have to move parallel to these directions and this direction is in these directions. So, this if you move in this direction the function value is decreased and physically also or, or graphically also you can see if you just move in this direction you will get optimum value of the function at this point. Let us call this point is C, you will get this and here if from A point you have to move in this direction. Let us call if you are it at B point you have to move from this point parallel to the D in the these directions. Okay. So, this point and difference between this point and this point if you move in this direction it will hit the wall at some iterations. Okay. So, you can say this one that is if both the cases function value is decreasing no doubt. So, we can make a remarks like this way, it is clear that f x function below decreases more, decreases substantially, substantially by moving along the steepest along the steepest descent direction direction from point a other on the other hand point b the off center point point b is the off center point will take us towards the wall agree okay? of the feasible region, the feasible region before much improvement can be made, before much improvement can be made. So, now question is how to center, because our initial guess may be anywhere in the feasible region. Now, question is how to center the off center point in a feasible region. The simplest way is do some transformation on the original decision variables and that will make that will transfer the original point into a what is called transform point which will be the center point. Center point means from the axis from the axis the distances will be same. So, next our point is how to how to center and 
interior point. Suppose in this case, suppose we are at this point. Now, this point how to make it centered? So, you have to do the initial variables x 1, x 2 some transformation which will convert into new variable in new variable will get the center point from the x some from some center point from the both axes. The point will be in the transform axis the point will be equidistant from the coordinate axis transform systems. So, let us call we take in one example and explain what is the meaning of this one. So, let us call we consider the our point B point which is off centered the point B is off centered point. Suppose this we take it. So, if we take it now we do transformation like this way after that transformation you will get new coordinate axis and that point should be equidistant from the coordinate transform coordinate axis. So, we define new coordinate axis y 1 is equal to the old value of x 1 divided by 3 and then the coordinate y 2 is a x 2 divided by 1. Now, you see whatever the this coordinate is I got it the x 1 of 0 x 1 of 0 divided by 3 x 2 of 0 divided by 1 this what will be. So, it is better to write x superscript 0 0 than 0 this is the transformation we made initial point which transform since it is the off center point that that point is not a equidistant from the axis one is 3 x axis is distance from y axis the distance is 3 from y x uh, from the x axis the distance is 1. So, it is a off center point. So, we have made it this one which equivalently we can write into matrix form y 0 y 1 of 0 y 2 of 0 this equal to write it that one is what we get 1 by 3 1 by 3 that is 1 0 0 multiplied by x 1 0 x 2 0. Okay. Now, you see if you substitute this is the transformation. So, what is this is coming if you do the x of 0 x 1 of 0 value is what 3 the x 2 of 0 value is 1 then if you put this into this, this value is 1 and this is 1. So, now see this one the transform coordinate axis the point y 0 point y 0 point is equidistant from the transform coordinate axis 1 1 is. So, now see the our in transform system what is our what is called our, our optimization problem we will see. Now, substituting the values of x and x 0 agree in terms of y 0 by substituting minimize the function which will be in terms of y is equal to minus x 1 plus x 2 x 1 is what? just say x 1 is 3 x 1 is 3 y 1 3 y 1. Okay. In general now if I write it in general this is the 3 y 1 then x 2 value is y 2. So, this which <coughs> you can write it this is minus the 3 y this is minus 3 1. So, I can write minus 3 1 y 1 y 2 and corresponding to this, this value this point x 0 that is it will be 3 y 1 0 y 2 0 agree. In general this is the transformation we made it this one then subject to our is x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 5 which we can write it 
<coughs> x 1 is what see this one relationship between this x 1 is 3 x 2. In general that relation is what y 1 is equal to x 1 by 3 and that corresponding point we can write it this one. Agree? So, this is that one and we can write 3 y 1 plus y 2 is less than equal to 5. So, now it is converted this is in transform coordinate axis or problem in minimization f of y what is f of minus 3 y 1 plus y 2 and subject to this condition. Another constraint is there what is called x 2 less than equal to 4 which equal to nothing but a y 2 is less than equal to 4 and then y 1 and y 2 is greater than equal to 0. So, if you transform coordinate axis we can say minimize f of y what is objective minus 3 y 1 plus y 2 subject to constraint inequality constraint 3 y 1 plus y 2 is less than equal to 5. Another inequality constraint is y 2 is equal to less than equal to 4 and y 1 y 2 are greater than 0. Since why it is greater than 0? Since x 1 is x 1 and x 2 greater than equal to 0, x 1 x 2 greater than equal to 0 that is why y 1 y 2 is greater than. So, now you see if you just read uh, this optimization problem in what is called uh, graphical um, uh, graphically if you plot the optimization problem this looks like this and you will see that point in coordinate new coordinate system that point is in the center point. So, I am now plotting that one you see this constraint this is the one constraint this is another constraint too and this constraint. So, our new variables in transform variables are y 1, y 1, y 2 and y 1 greater than equal to 0 that means, it indicates it is this side and y 2 is greater than equal to 0 this indicates this is that side. And we have a another constraint in transform coordinate axis y 2 is less than equal to 4. Suppose, this is 4 1 2 3 4 suppose this is 4 this is 2. So, this is one thing is that one and our inequality constraint you see this one 3 y 1 plus y 2 is equal to 5. Let us call y 1 is 0 y 2 is 5 y 2 is 5 here. Then <coughs> y 2 is 0 then y 1 is 5 by 3 that means 1.66. So, this is 1 1 2 then it is a 4 this is 1 1.6 may be here. So, our that constraint is that one. So, this so, our feasible region is that this shaded blue shaded portion this is the problem and our what is the our initial interior point 1 1. So, this is 1 and that is 1. So, this is our initial point in transform journey initial point that is 1 1 which is a centered point this is a centered point. Agree? So, in general now we will show how to convert if it is if the point is off center point how to convert into a center point in transform coordinate axis that we will discuss next class in details this one how to convert into that post portion. Okay? So, we will stop it here now.